Every so often there are events in life which change our own visions of our own future. Um, events that change our perception of what matters in life. And we're bringing two people on stage now who've... Um, hello. Uh, who've, we, have, we have one... Uh, okay, okay, great, fantastic. Ben. Who, who, have, who have experienced um, life-changing events, in one case to a very great extent, to one case to a slightly lesser extent, but both of them had their views of their own lives changed. And Ben List you've already met. Birgit Skarstein from Norway is a, a world champion rower and uh, skier. She is seven times world champion single skull rower and also Olympi a Paralympian gold medalist. So welcome to you both. Uh, Birgit, let's start with you. Why don't you just tell your story? What changed your view of life? Well, I'd say that it very much changed my view of life when I was 19 years old. Uh, I had been working in Thailand and I had an accident that cut my left foot off. Uh, and, and that's, you know, a little bit complicated itself. But then it turned out I also uh, got a little bacteria into that leg. And that was really... It was really interesting. The nerd in me just really thought that was very interesting to, to, to watch because, you know, every day when we were taking the wraps off the leg, a little bit more of the flesh would be gone because this bacteria, it was eating the leg from the inside. And since I caught this in Thailand, it was not very normal to bring back to Norway. And I can still remember the doctor after they got it tested, they tested this bacteria to see what is this. And he came into my room and he had like stars in his eyes. And he was, he was so enthusiastic. He was like, this tropical bacteria they've never seen before. <laughs> we have no clue what to do. <laughs> We're going to find a totally new combination of antibiotics for you. And I was like, that's great. <laughs> That's fun. <laughs> let's see. Let's see if you can do it. Yay! <laughs> and that also really gave me that feeling that this is not dependent on willpower. This is not about just wanting to get well. I'm totally dependent dependent on modern medicine to fix this because the bacteria was spreading. It was eating more and more, and I knew that. And the doctor said, you know, if you if you don't get this, you're out. And I was 19, I thought I had the rest of my life in front of me, and suddenly I realized, oh, was this it? Did I get 19 years? It was good 19 years. <laughs> I was happy, I'm, I'm lucky, I got 19 years, that's good. And as I was writing my will um, for my siblings, <laughs> uh, with the money that I, I had saved, you know, working part-time uh, aside of high school, and, and saying, don't drink, this money up <laughs> there to go for education. <laughs> I'm going to be your big sister anyways, you know, even if I can't be there. Um, accepting the vulnerability that we're all living with, but that's not there in everyday life. And also seeing the opportunities that we have gotten from the people going in front of us. And they did actually fix the bacteria. Um, and out of bad luck, uh, I was 10 months later having a surgery on my foot. It was a very easy surgery. Um, and I got an epidural, you know, anesthetic into the back. Very uncomplicated. And then it turned out they hit the spinal cord <laughs> by mistake. And it was just that they were doing something good for me. Like, they wanted to do something good. They just wanted me to not have pain. And ended up taking away the pain for the rest of the life. Um, and I woke up, and I, I you know, it was, it was belly button down. Uh, so it was the wrong dose at the wrong place at the wrong time. And I woke up, and this physiotherapist, she comes into the room, and she says, I was sitting in my bed, you know, kind of like you're sitting in your seats now, and she said, can you lift your right leg? And if I tell you guys, can you lift your right leg. How'd you do that? 
try. <laughs> yeah, you do it, right? You just do it. Mm. You just lift your leg. And I was sitting there, and I was looking at my leg. I was like, come on. Sesame, sesame. <laughs> lift. And it didn't happen. And she said, hmm, could you lift your left leg? I was like, come on. <laughs> How do I do this? I've been walking for 20 years. Come on. And it just didn't move. And she was like, hmm, it's not too good. And the doctors, after a couple of months, you know, I was, they said, well, it might, it might pass, it might pass. Until we had that, you know, talk where I asked them straight out, um, will I ever be able to walk again? And you know this feeling? It gets totally quiet, a little bit awkward. And then one of them was like, ah, uh, well, there's a lot of really interesting uh, stem cell signs going on in China. Mm. I was like, okay, no. <laughs> But now, you know, the future, what it holds, that answer to that question might be different. Yeah, that's my take into it. And I'm you have, and you have a chance now. to talk about that <laughs> different future. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Bigot. And you have a chance to talk about that different, potentially scientific future in the panel this afternoon. Ben, very briefly, you had a, an event which was less life-changing, but it did change your perspective on life. Just yeah. very briefly, tell us what it was. Yeah, so as I, as I had explained to you, I, I didn't feel so comfortable telling my story now because I can still walk and I had a little accident and everybody survived. So it's, it's kind of challenging to even bring this up in this context after what you have just described. Um, in any case, in, in my experience, we were in, in Thailand as well in 2004 and the last day of our vacation with my two boys, three and five years old, not being able to swim. And uh, we had just packed our stuff and we were sitting by the pool. And then a loud noise started to erupt and people came running all of a sudden from the beach saying, a big wave is coming. And both my wife and I grabbed one child and tried to sort of run a little bit, but then the water was coming. And, and just a minute later, we were just in the deep black water. And the kids, I lost my boy out of my hand and, and, and I was just alone. And this, this moment was like, there was not even a body anymore. I couldn't even understand the situation. It was so quick and so dark. And, and, and um, in any case, um, as I said, like we all survived, we all came out and, and I was under the water a few minutes, tumbled around. And then all of a sudden I came to the surface. I saw, okay, this is the situation. The, the, the village is gone. We are all underwater. And uh, then I was underwater again, and finally somehow I came out and climbed on a, on a tree. And, uh, but that, that took so long that I was absolutely convinced I would be the only one that has survived this from, from our family. Because it was, I, I came out and it was just a miracle that I, that I survived that, that, uh, that big wave. And, and so then after some time, when we got some confidence in the sea to be calm again, I climbed down, I walked up, walked around, and then I met somebody and he said, I saw your, your wife on, on, on another hill and she was with one boy. And I was like, oh, maybe she saved her boy. I mean, these are the thoughts that, that you have in that moment. And then I finally came on that hill and that was my, the son that I was carrying, actually, he was with her because when she survived this and saved herself on a palm tree, she heard a voice, somebody, some kid crying, mama, mama, and it was Paul. So she jumped in the water, uh, saved his life, climbed on the tree again, and, and there they were. And he was kind of severely injured. He had a little hole in his lung and, and you know, was pale in his face. And we were rather nervous. And the, but the three-year-old boy was somehow not there anymore. And so, yeah, then, then it was all about saving Paul. And, and, and so... You know, it took some some while, and we went to one one Buddhist monastery, and finally, you know, in the late evening, we arrived at a hospital, 150 kilometers away. Polly, we wanted to save my wife and I, and and we came to a room that was sort of of, of abandoned children, like there were just a few children, and and the in the very far corner of the the room, there was one blonde guy that looked like my little son, and then I was like. That can't be. That's kind of a hallucination that you have when you just lost a child. Maybe you just... So I walked 
towards his face. And he was just in front of me. And I, I was, yeah, that's him, you know. And it was like s such an incredible moment. I mean, I, I, this is beyond what I have had experienced in my life. Also subsequently, I have to say, including uh, what happened on October 6 last year. Um, that was really incredible. And, and it also, for him, it took a moment to recognize me. But then we were there and celebrating our recovery. Yeah. So that was the, the story in a, in a short, <laughs> short version. Again, it's, yeah. it's nothing in comparison to what <laughs> we have experienced. <laughs> <Definitely>. <laughs> uh, I want, I, thank you. Uh, not easy stories to tell, mm. either of them. I want you to um, be in conversation with each other now mm. about how this changes your view of what matters. But just we're going to, I'd like you to start, but for the first two minutes, we're going to try something, which is that, of course, these are very dramatic events. We all have events that change our perspective on life, sometimes to greater or lesser extent. And we just thought that it might be interesting for some of you to share those thoughts with the people you're sitting next to, perhaps people you're sitting next to that you don't know. It's a bit bold, it's a bit experimental. You may not feel comfortable doing this, in which case you, can't, you now have two minutes of quiet. You can check your phones, look at your messages, <laughs> sleep, whatever you like for two minutes. But if you'd like to, there are two minutes available to tell each other very briefly stories about things that have changed your lives. So, please go ahead. Oh my God, that was breathtaking. We were saying when you found your... To start. You can start. Okay. So I know two minutes isn't very long. Uh, you probably just got started. But thank you. And sorry to bring you back to stage. But I'd, mm -hmm. I'd love to eavesdrop on the conversation that is beginning yeah. between Ben and Birgit. So please. I mean, who, who am I to, to, you know, conclude and say what this, how this life-changing event has changed me? Because, you know, I'm here in good health and so are my kids. And they're both here like two meter and three tall, boy, huge boys, <laughs> giants. <laughs> and everybody, everybody's happy, but um, my, my, what, what was so profound for me was this, this recognition when you come out of this dark water and after this month and somehow we all came back to good health, this realization what really matters, which I had, because before I was a very ambitious scientist like many here that came to Stockholm ultimately, right? Super you know, eager to get cited and get recognized and so on. Coming out of this water, that was like so uninteresting. I mean, I completely lost this. I didn't, I didn't, I couldn't care less about how much recognition I get, how much citations I have and who publishes what. It was completely irrelevant for my life all of a sudden. And, and I was, I had this very simple idea. I was in a hospital in Phuket 
And then I, I thought maybe a rainy day in Mülheim an der Ruhr, a relatively boring city in the western part of Germany, I drink a cup of tea and that was heaven for me, right? Just be, and that's what I also think when, 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 I, when I see people affected with COVID, for example, right? And in the early days when it was really a bad disease, they, they can't breathe, right? So they lie on their belly in the hospital and then, then they think, wasn't it the most beautiful thing in my life to be able to just normally breathe? Right, and that it, it sort of simplifies your life when you have such an experience. At least for me, it was like this. I don't know how, how it was for you, but I guess you seem like a person who has this life energy fully in it. And I imagine you, you got the same spirit back at some point. I don't know. I can really relate to what you're uh, saying. It's simplifying mm. it because it's not that complicated. We're really lucky to be alive <laughs> and we have this opportunity to do something about it. Yeah. You know, it, that is a huge privilege. And getting to know that it's it, to not take it for granted and also to see what you actually have. I think that afterwards the, the, the color has got a little bit stronger. You know, the, the feeling of being able to take a breath and see the great people I have in life to see how lucky we are to do, be doing what we're doing, to find compassion and love, and to see the value of little things. Be grateful, because I always have a really huge contrast saying that it, I didn't even have to be here. And in that way, everything is kind of a bonus. And life is unfair. It is for, for most of us at times, you know, it goes up and down. Uh, and when you make the references so wide uh, and you have a perspective of what could be the alternative, maybe it's a little bit easier to see the good parts and the positive things and the things that you're grateful of having. Yeah. Um, and if you focus your energy into what you can do uh, and what you got, you can get further. But I also had a little bit of an opposite experience than you because I, I, for a while, felt like I had a rush, you know, I, I, oh, I can die any day, you know, I really have to get going, yeah. I have to get yeah. all this done, you know, I can, can be over tomorrow, and then I, after, after like 10 years of rushing, I was like, mm. ah, <laughs> you know, it's also nice to just sit still yeah. and, and, and find yeah. a lot of meaning in life in connection with other people, yeah. because in some way everything comes back to yeah. the people we're doing this with. Yeah, or other animals, dogs, for example. I mean, nothing against the call from Stockholm. That was really a special moment. It was ec <laughs> ecstatic. I mean, don't get me wrong, especially here. <laughs> But, you know, during lunchtime, I take a walk with my dog through a little forest close to our house, and it's, the sun comes through the leaves, and it's just so joyful. You know, it's just the beauty. And, and what you said also about people seeing my kids grow, grow up like this and, and being strong, tall boys, it's just incredible. There's so much joy and, and beauty in this, in this planet and intelligence, right? And all these things that we can enjoy. So, yeah. <laughs> Wow. Um, thank you so much. There's so much joy and beauty in your conversation, despite the backdrop to it. It, it could go on for a long time, but unfortunately, as timekeeper, I'm not allowed to break the rules, so we have to stop. But I also wanted to thank the audience for taking part so beautifully. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, it was an amazing thing to see. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you both.